Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're going to work on a project guitar. How's it going? My name is Dylan and this is Dylan Talks Tone. On this channel we have like 400 videos all about guitar tone, guitar tech, wiring, pickups, setup, all kinds of stuff. And so today we're going to actually go in the shop and do some work. But uh, we've got a pretty interesting project that we're about to do right now. So what we've got here is about a 2000... Five-ish Fender Telecaster. It's an American standard Telecaster. Nothing special. Just a normal, normal Telecaster. But the owner, who's had this guitar for like 20 years, said, "You know, it's worthless to me now. I'll probably never sell it. I'm not a country guy. I'm more of a rocker, but I like the guitar. So I want to have. I want to do something else. So we're gonna do the thing that everybody hates it when we do. But the owner wants it, and I'm really excited to do it for him. We're gonna put." all of this stuff in there. So let's talk about what this stuff is. We've got a set of our Dylan Toxtone uh, Dylan Pickups DAF humbuckers. So this is basically our version of a PAF, right? 7.6K on the neck and about mm, 8.2 or so on the bridge. El Nico 5 humbucker. We did it in a really cool clear bobbin and uh, cause he wanted to be able to see that. Like, you know, I think it'll look pretty sweet. Of course, it's a four wire uh, pickup so that we can use it for some coil splitting if that's something that we want to do. So we've got the neck one there and then we've got the bridge one here. And now, of course, to accommodate that in a Telecaster, then this bridge is going to have to come off. This pickguard is going to have to come off and we're going to have to replace it with two different things here. So we've got this pickguard here. Now obviously the body's gonna have to be routed so that we can fit the humbucker in there. And then we've got this interesting bridge here. Now this is an interesting combination of stuff because that bridge is gonna go there, which means we'll need to route the body there as well. So in order to do this, the bridge is gonna have to come off, the pickguard's gonna have to come off, all the wiring's gonna have to come out, and actually the neck is gonna have to come off too so that we can set our jig up uh, our router template so that we can route the humbucker into the neck position. So um, this is an interesting one because this has one of those standard um, American standard three bolt bridges so we had to go with something a little funky to get this job done. Um, if it's a more traditional mounted bridge then we can use a four screw bridge which is more plentiful. So we've got an interesting combination of stuff here. One thing I'll mention Usually, when I do these projects, like so let's say we're going to put some new pickups in this guitar, we would do some before and after videos, but you know what a telly sounds like. It's not going to sound the same. There's not any reason really to do an A-B video. You know what a telly sounds like. And we're going to put humbuckers in this thing. I think it's going to be super fun. But there's really no reason to A-B it. We will play it afterwards, though, because I think it's going to be a pretty rocking instrument. All right. I guess let's get started. Let's get the strings off of it first. <clears throat> first things first, I'm going to take this pick guard off because I want to see what is underneath here and what we will have to do to add to this. Well, look at that. We're not even going to have to route the body. That is so killer. A humbucker is just going to drop right in there. Oh, man. That saves, that saves some work. I'm very stoked to find that out. So now we don't even have to modify this part of the guitar. Still, we have to modify that part first. Let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and disconnect all of the electronics so that we can get these pickups out. Now, <clears throat> you may notice that I'm actually kind of savagely cutting the the electronics out of the guitar. Uh, but the reason for that is all of it's going to get replaced because we're going to humbuckers. So we're going to need to change pot values and all that sort of stuff. So it pretty much just doesn't matter. Done. Out. And that little dude's going to go right like that. Now, here's the thing that we're going to have to also modify. So even though we don't have to route the body here, this bridge is a little bit larger than this one. So I already know that we're going to probably have to do some routing or some shaping on uh, this part of the pick guard. The one thing that I'm really stoked about though is now that we know this, I don't have to take the neck of the guitar off because I don't have to do any routing here. That's the only reason I would have had to take the neck off of the guitar. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get these saddles out of the way. So these three barrel saddle or three uh, screw bridges, a lot of times you have to take the saddle off 
in order to expose the mounting screw that is behind it. So there's that one. There should be one right about here in the middle. Put that saddle screw back in so we don't lose it. basically all the parts out of the guitar that were taken out. And as you can see, this is gonna sit right about like so. Now we've got a template that we will put on here and we'll just route that right out. And everything should just be fine. And then one thing I wanna check before we cut anything is let's just make sure that with the bridge the way it's supposed to be right there, that we have 12 and 3 quarters inches from the 12th fret to where that high E is supposed to be, and we do. So, scale length is correct, everything looks good. Now we just need to go ahead and uh, I'll show you how I prep the body for routing uh, so that we don't do any damage to any of the finish. But first, I'm going to go ahead and clean it all up because that's, to me, the first step. So we're going to go ahead and grab our lizard spit, guitar polish, and we're going to give this a quick cleaning. This stuff right here, best stuff in the business. You may ask, why am I cleaning it now? I'm cleaning it now because as you move the guitar around, as you have parts around it, the, the dirt and other grit and stuff can get ground into the finish where you don't want it to be and cause scratches where you don't want them. So I do what I can to make sure that my surface and my area and that the guitar is clean before we start any work. That way, tracking any little issues or problems along the way is much easier. What we're gonna do, I'll show you here in a minute. Now the way I'm gonna do this, we're gonna take this bridge. The only holes on this bridge that are gonna matter anymore are the, where the actual uh, holes where the saddles, where the strings go through. So we're gonna go ahead and line this up this way, and then we're gonna use that for our marks, and we're gonna mark our drill, our holes to be drilled. Uh, I'll do that with a punch, and then we will mark out where we want to have routed, and then we will line it out with tape so that we don't damage the finish as we slide the router around, and then we will put a template on here and make it just right. All right. Okay, so some rough layout here. We've got uh, using our string holes as a reference because that's the only thing you have left and I double checked the scale length. So that's basically where our humbucker is gonna go but we're gonna use an actual humbucker routing template to do this and Instead of just sticking the template to the guitar and risking marring the finish, I'm going to put some blue tape down uh, around it and then we'll stick the routing template to that. I just do this so that the finish doesn't get... It's just double-sided tape that holds the routing template down, but I also don't want to damage this finish. So this is how we do it. There's probably millions of different ways to do this. And I'm sure somebody's jumping through the internet right now being like, you shouldn't do it that way. You should do it some other way, blah, blah, blah. But this is how we do it and it works great. All right, so here's our routing template. It goes right over the body like that. The thing we gotta be really careful about here is that these end tabs do not stick out Mark these outside holes for the six strings. Make sure this is 100% in the right spot. So what we did here is I also marked this edge so that when I put this template down, it doesn't go too far this way or this way because these tabs right here are at the very outside edge. We don't want them showing out from underneath there. So let's go ahead and grab some double-sided tape. All right. Okay. 
and there we are. Let's go ahead and get the vacuum clear ready and get the router ready. All right, I'm going to turn the vacuum cleaner on and we're going to route this baby. Well, all right, so we made a lot of progress today. We went ahead and routed this thing, but there's some kind of cool positives that happen here. One is we didn't have to route the neck pickup, which is cool because that means I don't have to take the neck off, which I really dig. Side note, the neck pocket's really loose. It's just the way guitars are. So we went ahead and routed the bridge pickup out. And so now we have that baby sorted the way we want it, right about like so. And uh, we'll go ahead and drill those holes and dry fit everything in there. Now, the one thing I'm going to have to do here is that bridge, because it's bigger than normal, is going to come up too far. And it's going to interfere here with the pick guard. So I'll probably have to take some out of this pick guard just a little bit, do a little reshaping. In our next video, we'll go ahead, I'll get all that done off camera because that's going to be a bunch of fiddling and screwing around to make that right. So then once that's all correct, then we'll come back and I'll go ahead and we will reassemble everything and play it. Alright, so we, I told you I was going to kind of save you the trouble of hanging out with me for all this fiddling around with the pick guard and all that sort of stuff. But here it is, it's done. So we've got the humbucker in the neck, the humbucker in the bridge. Looks pretty sweet. Everything's in there the way it's supposed to be. Uh, everything's straight. I went ahead and did a setup on the guitar, just a preliminary setup um, to make sure everything was kind of in the place it was supposed to be. And as you can see, we have not hooked up anything. 250K pots. So we need to swap these out to, two, uh, to 500K pots and we're going to put a new capacitor in here too, just so he can uh, make sure he's got a legit setup. So 500k pots and a new cap. So let's go ahead and go out to the garage and uh, finish this part. We'll drop this in, hook the pickups up, and then we'll go play it. All right, so out with the old, in with the new. Here's the old stuff. And it looks like one, there was one CTS pot from one generation and then another CTS pot from a different generation. And um, so we went ahead and swapped that out. We got some Borns low friction pots in there with a 22 cap. We switched over to a 22 because obviously we're going with humbuckers and we want to start there. If I don't like it, I'll change the cap later, but that's going to be the baseline for today. And uh, this three-way switch looks pretty good, so we're just going to leave it like that. So now it's time to go ahead and put this thing in the guitar. All right, so we got this baby all sorted out. Let's go ahead and close the hood on it. Probably don't need some of these grounds, but... I didn't want to take everything out that was in their factory in case the client wanted them in there somehow. So let's go ahead and just plug this up to our Boss Katana Mini. Well, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and put the screws in it, and we're going to take it in and play it through the Kemper and see what it sounds like. All right. Well, there it is. It's all back together. It's pretty all right, huh? Two humbuckers in a telly. Um, now, this guitar's got an interesting story. The guy's owned it for like 20 years, and he just told me, he's like, you know, uh, it's no use to me. It's beat up. I can't really sell it. I can't get any real, you know, money out of it or anything. So let's make it into something I can use. 
So for all you people on the internet that are like, you can never put humbuckers in a telly. Calm down, it's not your guitar. I think we're going to make that a hashtag. Calm down, it's not your guitar. Because this is actually a weapon now. It's pretty awesome. It sounds pretty awesome. These are just the DAF humbuckers that we put in a lot of guitars. Sounds great, right? Here's the neck. All right, let's put some beans on this thing. He wanted a guitar that was going to rock. So let's just throw some. I mean, what else do you want? Anyway, we could noodle all day, but the bottom line is we took a worthless guitar to somebody, to him, and we made it into something that's really, really cool. And I think it's a really great uh, example. We basically put our, we just did a normal conversion to a Dylan Pickups DAF in the neck and a DAF in the bridge. Just our, our real PAF voiced, really low output humbuckers. We switched over to two 500k pots with a .022 microfarad cap and uh, orange shot, and here we are. And you're going to say, well, that's everything sounds great when it sounds like that. But the thing is, this is what he wants. He could use the guitar for basically anything. If we wanted to, on this particular guitar, we could put coil, uh, like a master coil split or coil split each pickup individually and have a really nice telly-tone. Um, one of the reasons we use this bridge, so I didn't really, I don't really like these bridges, um, and that's going to be the biggest objection most people have, but the reason I had to use it, <coughs> excuse me, the reason I had to use it is because this is one of those stock fender three-bolt American Standard bridges. And so, to cover all of those holes up, basically, and to make it wide enough to, when you route a humbucker into a telly, sometimes the hole will show on the bottom down here. And so this bridge screws in different places than the factory one, so that you don't have to worry about filling and pegging holes. Um, this is kind of the easy mask all way to do it when you have an American standard telly. Now the problem is is that you don't end up with three saddles, but he wanted six saddles. So for this particular client, it worked out perfect. So yeah, super fun. This is a cool project. Um, my name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. And the next time we do uh, another guitar project like this, we'll kind of take you through it a little bit. We got another one coming, I think maybe a Les Paul. And then we got another one coming after that. So we got some kind of fun little projects going on around the shop that we're going to share with you on a more regular basis, kind of in this less formal little vloggy style. You know, I'm just going to cut it together and and hope you enjoy uh, learning about some guitar mods. Maybe it'll give you some idea for yourself. If you have an idea for a guitar mod video uh, and we can try to work it into something, 
put it in the comments because I want to hear from you what you think of modifying this guitar and what you would like to do to your guitar or maybe need some help modifying your guitar. Put it in the comments and I'll try to get to it. I might not be able to get to everything right away, but we'll do what we can. Let's do some more of these little modding on the bench videos. I think it's really fun. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. And then that way you'll know the next time we make a cool video just like this one.